Welcome back to another IM Users video. Today we're going to take a look at setting up the IM H1T data transfer software. Now before we begin, on your IM system you need to make sure you've upgraded to at least version 3.4. Then under optional settings, go down to measurement output and select the fourth of the checkboxes there. If you don't see it, make sure you've upgraded. Second, I've connected my RS-232 cable into port 1 on the back of my controller. The other side of the system, the USB port, is plugged into my computer. We're going to be working off of Windows 7 here. If you have Windows XP or Windows 8, the process is similar, but your buttons may show up in different locations. The first thing you need to find out is where your COM port is, where your USB port has been plugged into. First thing we do is go down to your Start menu. Go to Computer, right click, and go to Properties. On Windows XP, Device Manager will be at the top. Windows 7 and Windows 8, it'll be on the left hand side. Click Device Manager and go to your Ports. Here's where you'll find that USB to serial converter. In this case, it's on COM3. Your machine will likely be different. The second thing we want to do before we start is to set up an Excel file. So I have a template here that I've generated where I leave locations in for things like the inspector, the date, the parts number, fields for each of the measurements, the time they were taken, and the actual raw data itself. I've also done some calculations, put in locations for min, max, average, so on and so forth, as well as selecting locations for charts. Now, let's start up the software. Open up your IM data transfer software, and the first thing we'll need to do is set up your communication. So you want to select New. Here, you need to select your COM port. Now in this case, I only have one option to pick from. That's good. Sometimes you'll have more, so make sure you select the correct COM port. All of your other settings should remain at default. To test it out, hit Start Receiving. On your IM system, you want to pull up a program, any program will do, and measure that part. You just want to test that the data is flowing correctly. Once you have that set up, hit Save. We're going to name this file. You can save it anywhere you want, and you only have to set it up once. Next, we're actually going to set up our Excel file. So we're going to go to Transfer Settings and select New. From here, we can browse on our computer and find that template form. Hit open, hit OK, and the system will open up the Excel file as well as its transfer software. If you haven't already, I highly recommend shrinking your Excel file down to take up a half page. That way you can see both forms at the same time. First thing to do is hit Start Receiving. Again, any part on your machine, just run an inspection. The system will populate the information for that part. Now we have all the information directly from the machine. All the measurements, parts numbers, the date and time, any additional info. Now we're ready to start. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to select the actual date. Selecting the date here, I'm going to set that as the inspection date. So I've selected the cell. I'm then going to select the cell on my Excel sheet. From here, you have three different options for how the data transfers over. You can select Overwrite, which each time you measure a new part, it'll just update it to the latest piece of information. You can set it to go down, so each time it gets a new piece of information, it'll fill out the cell below it. Or you can select Right, or each time it gets a new piece of information, it fills the cell to the right of it. In this case, I want to select Overwrite. I'm also going to grab the name of the part and put that as the parts number. Again, overwriting. Now we can take each of the measurements. Here's the name of the measurement. I'm going to select a location and hit overwrite. As you can see, it color codes. So as we go, it's showing me where we're actually selecting and where we're populating the new piece of information. You only have to do this setup once per Excel form. So you don't have to do it for each part. The parts are universal. The data will always come out the exact same way you're actually just setting up this Excel template. 
So I've overwritten each of the names. Now I want to have it start populating actual data. I'm going to use the time as the timestamp to show when the inspection was done. So I select the time and select over here. Now what I want is that every time a new piece of information comes in, I want it to populate below the original one. So I select down and hit register. Now we're going to grab each piece of information, select a new cell, and have it register those. It really is a pretty simple process and you can do a heck of a lot with it. If for some reason you make an error, on the right hand side are each of your transfers. You can take a look at each one of them, select one, and delete it if you need to remove it. Or you can change how it in inputs. Once you think you have it correct, hit test transferring. That'll transfer the information captured here over to the form. You can do it multiple times to make sure that it'll actually fill out the way you want it to. That looks great. So now we're going to save this transfer. I'm going to save it to the same location as my Excel form. You don't have to, but it makes it easier for finding it later. I'm also going to name it the same thing as the Excel form, since that's what I want it to fill out. Now it's important not to save this test transfer information to the original, so when we close this, I want to make sure to hit Don't Save. But now we're ready to measure parts. So as an operator, I'm going to walk up to the machine and select whatever form it is I want to use. We then hit Start Transferring. Now I walk over to my machine, throw the first part on, and inspect it. That information fills in. We can then continue to throw the next part, the next part, the next part on, and each time that it finishes an inspection, it'll drop the next piece of information into the cells. Because we already had our calculations in originally, if I scroll down, I'll find that my max, mins, and averages have all been calculated, and then on the second page, my actual charts have been populated. Once we're done, we simply go to File, Save As, and choose a location that we want to save the file to. Hit Stop Transferring will prevent it from sending additional information to that form, and then you can simply close the form down. When you're ready to go for your next program, all you have to do is again select what form you'd like to fill out, hit Start Transferring, a form will open up and you're ready to go for the next part. That's all there is to it. It gives you a lot of flexibility. You can create your own forms and do anything you want with them. Thanks for watching.